How do you focus your camera when using flash and it's hard to see your subject? It's all about modeling lights on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you know what to do. Just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question to answer right here on a future show. Now today's question was sent in by Paul and he wants to know... How do you get your pictures in focus when using off-camera flash if it's too dark for the camera to focus on the model? Isn't there a light on the flash that you can use for focusing? Thanks for sending that in, Paul. I do appreciate it. The simple answer in most cases is yes. Let's talk about modeling lights. All right, so you probably already know that when you first start working with artificial lights to take pictures, there are generally two kinds of light that you can add, constant light and flash. Constant light is sometimes also called continuous light, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's constantly on so you can see it, make the adjustments you want, and then take your pictures. Flash, on the other hand, is kind of a different beast. It's a very short burst of light that you really don't see with the naked eye. The camera exposure is timed perfectly so that the sensor, or the film if you're shooting that, is being exposed at the same moment that the flash is firing, so that's what creates the light in your photo. Now, by the way, I use the terms flash and strobe interchangeably. Sometimes photographers refer to a small speed light as a flash and a larger studio light as a strobe, but I don't make that distinction. They're basically the same thing. They're just different sizes and power levels, so don't get too hung up on the terminology. So I do prefer to use flash over constant light. This video isn't about the pros and cons of each of those, and maybe that's a topic for a future show. But for me, I like flash because you can get a lot more light output from it, and it's easier to freeze your subject even when they're moving fast. One challenge with flash, though, is that sometimes you're in a low light situation, and it's just hard to see your subject. You might be indoors and have most of the room lights off so that none of them impact your exposure. Or you might be outside at dusk or maybe at night and there's just not enough ambient light before you take the photo. Not only is it hard for you to see, but the camera might have trouble locking focus on your subject if it can't see either. So what's a person to do? Well, the first thing is that if you're using a mirrorless camera or you have live view on a DSLR, you should probably turn off your camera's exposure simulation function. Now I did a video about that recently and I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But basically with exposure simulation on, the settings you're using are probably way too dark when you only have ambient light. If you turn exposure simulation off, the camera's gonna brighten up the display so that you can see your subject before taking the picture. Now, of course, that's only gonna help you to see your subject better when you're looking through the camera or on the viewfinder or the back of the screen. It's not gonna help you when you're looking at the person in real life. So, this is where modeling lights are gonna come into play. Now, most strobes actually consist of two different lights in one. Now, this here is my Westcott FJ 400 studio strobe. Let me show you the different parts of it here. I love this light. I use all the Westcott lights here in my studio. Um, and this is a 400 watt second strobe. So first thing is there's a reflector on the front here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that off. It's a, it's a traditional Bowens mount. So you can use a lot of different uh, modifiers on here, anything with a Bowens mount on it. Um, so inside there, right on the outside here, this is a frosted glass dome. Basically, there's a little bit of diffusion on there. It's mostly for protection. It's just so you don't touch the lights in there and the, anything in there. Gives you a little bit of uh, protection, almost like a big lens hood that kind of covers the inside there. Now, I can actually take that off. Let's pop that sucker off. That's glass. Be careful with that. And then, here are the main parts of your light. Let's see how well you can see that. So, this round part right here, that's your actual flash tube. So when you take a picture, that's where the light's going to come out. That flash is going to fire very quickly, very bright, and that's your flash. In the middle, there is that yellow, that little round yellow thing in the middle. That is actually an LED light, and that is your modeling light. Let me show you how these work. The flash is this right here, your traditional flash. That's coming from that flash tube. The modeling light, though, boom. That's what your modeling light looks like. So that is a constant light. Uh, as opposed to the flash, and both of those are in this one unit here. So, that's how that works, and that's the pieces of that. You can see that the modeling light, 
which is also sometimes called a modeling lamp, by the way. It's just your traditional constant light, like any other continuous light source. And this is gonna help you to see better, and the camera should have no trouble focusing when you're using that. Now keep in mind that the modeling light isn't the actual light that you're gonna see in the photo. Like I said, when you push the shutter, the flash is still gonna fire, and it is much brighter than the modeling light. Some strobes actually are set so that they automatically turn off the modeling light when you take a picture, then you fire the flash, it fires the flash, and then it turns the modeling light back on automatically. That's to guarantee that it doesn't impact your exposure when the picture is taken. Most likely, even if that modeling light stays on, the flash is so much brighter. This one on this Westcott modeling light, it's a 20 watt LED, which is nice and bright for focusing, but you're not gonna see it in your exposure unless you're using a super low power setting on your flash. Now every big studio strobe that I can think of has a modeling light already built in. You can even turn it on and off, in this case, with the remote transmitter, which is really nice. So you can do it right from the camera. You're already gonna have this on your camera because this is what's gonna fire your flash, but you can actually turn the modeling light on and off right from the camera without having to go to the light. Um, some smaller flashes don't have modeling lights at all. You do have to check your specific model, but many of the Canon speed lights today actually do have a modeling light. This is the Canon EL5. If I turn it on, um, this is the flash, right? Normal flash, but it also does have a modeling light built in right there. So that's really nice that speed lights today, actually some of them do have a modeling light built in. That's, that's kind of a, a you know, more recent thing. Uh, because many people are using speed lights to do off-camera flash, so having that modeling light is kind of a game changer. But if your flash doesn't have a modeling light, what you can do to help you focus is simply use a flashlight or the light even on your phone and just get it in close and shine it on your subject. If you do use a super bright, bright flashlight, just make sure to turn it off right before you take the picture so it actually doesn't affect your exposure if it's a really bright flashlight. So that answers Paul's question about focusing, but using a modeling light has another really important benefit. When you're shooting with flash, it might be challenging to imagine what your photo is gonna look like since you can't see what the flash is gonna do until after you've taken the picture. I do know some new beginner photographers are scared of flash and prefer to start out using constant lights. It's easier to do that because what you see is what you get. You could actually see everything that's happening before you take the picture, but if you want the power and versatility of flash while also easing some of that fear, then the modeling light gives you the best of both worlds. It's there to model the light that's gonna come from the flash when you take the picture. By turning it on, you can absolutely see how the flash is gonna hit your subject, what the shadows are gonna do, where it's gonna bounce around. You can see all of that with the modeling light. There are infinite ways to place a light and so many different types of modifiers you can use to make a picture. Soft boxes, umbrellas, reflectors, and on and on and on. This is gonna help you to see what's happening. And then when you get into using multiple lights, it can get very confusing to figure out what light is coming from where. So having the modeling lights on allows you to see what you're doing. Some strobes even allow you to have the modeling lights change brightness in relation to the power levels of each flash. That's gonna help you to see the brightness ratio between each light. You might have a key light, a rim light, a hair light, and you can see which ones are brighter and darker. Then when you take the final photo, there should be no surprises, at least as far as the direction and quality of the light is concerned. Now you might be wondering if you can just turn the flash off and use the modeling lights to take pictures just like a traditional constant light. Yes, you can absolutely do that. However, the continuous lights you're probably gonna purchase are gonna be significantly brighter than a modeling light. Like I said, the FJ400 has a 20 watt LED. It's not uncommon to have constant lights that are 60, 150, 300, or even 500 watts and more. But in a pinch, if you want just a little bit of extra light and don't need the power from the flash, then sure, you can absolutely shoot with the modeling light. Just remember, if you're using a battery power unit, leaving that on all the time is gonna eat up your battery, so make sure you've got extra battery power on hand. Now there is one more kind of small but interesting benefit to using a modeling light, especially when photographing people. Well, only when photographing people. Seeing the color in someone's eyes is often an important part of a photo. You know that whole eyes are the window to the soul thing? Well, if you're working in low light, your subject's pupils are gonna be dilated. In other words, the dark part in the middle is gonna be bigger. That's gonna show less of their iris, which is where the color is. 
the more ambient light you have, the smaller the pupil and the more color we see. So having the modern light on is gonna brighten up the entire environment, gonna constrict the pupil and expose the color in your subject's eyes. Now obviously this is less of an issue in a wider photo showing full body, but the tighter you get to someone's face, the more you're gonna see that difference. So there you have it. That's what modeling lights are and how and why you would use them. Do you guys use modeling lights? Let me know how they've helped you in the comments down below. Remember, of course, you can send in your own photo questions just like Paul did by going to askdavidbergman.com and filling out that form. If you like these videos, I always appreciate you hitting that like button and of course subscribing to the Adorama channel by clicking down below. Thanks so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. I hope you'll come back next time when I'll have another question to answer right here on Ask David Bergman.